there and welcome to today's vlog. Sue and I have just got back from a lovely three days in the beautiful town of Harrogate in North Yorkshire. Uh, we love Harrogate, it's uh, a lovely place to visit and uh, let me show you something. There is a very famous tea room in Harrogate called Betty's Tea Room and uh, we didn't actually go and have food in there because it's quite expensive but we did uh, buy from uh, Betty's Tea Room Shop uh, this, which is called a Fat Rascal. It, uh, I don't know why it's called that, maybe it's because that's what it turns you into if you eat too many, but it's absolutely delicious. So look forward to consuming that later in the day. No, we were there actually because we we're attending a New Wine Leadership Conference. New Wine is a a grouping that seeks to encourage and resource churches and leaders and, and individual Christians uh, to renew the church, to uh, transform the nation through the power of the gospel. And uh, every couple of years they have a national gathering uh, at Harrogate. So this is probably about the fourth or fifth time we've been. And it, we had a wonderful time, So some really powerful uh, speakers at times of sharing and worship and prayer. I, I did actually wonder whether there would be so many there this year because of COVID and people's anxiety about that. But it, the the uh, conference centre, which holds the well, the auditorium holds about two thousand people, and it was pretty much packed uh, for every session. It was a wonderful times of worship. Just a couple of uh, speakers I've mentioned to you. First of all, a guy called Glenn Packiam. He's uh, American, spoke really well for a couple of the sessions. And just to mention one or highlight one thing that he uh, brought home to us, uh, and that uh, comes from a passage in John, uh, sorry, Mark chapter 3 and verse 13, where Jesus is commissioning uh, the apostles, the 12 apostles. Jesus went up into the hills and called to him, those he wanted they came to him and then it says he appointed 12 designating them apostles that sent out ones that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons and sometimes we we focus in that passage on the the Jesus commissioning them to preach to proclaim the gospel the good news gives them authority but what, what uh, Glenn Packiam highlighted to us uh, that sometimes we overlook is the first thing that Jesus uh, appointed them to. He says he appointed them that they might be with him. Uh, and so the priority for a Christian disciple is to be with Jesus, to have that relationship with him, to get to know Jesus in a deeper way. So our calling is not, first of all, to a particular purpose, but to a person, to Jesus. Jesus is to be the centre of our lives, our Christian lives. And kind of linked in with that, another guy, a really uh, enthusiastic, powerful speaker, James Aladiran from uh, Manchester area. He was talking about the... Uh, making prayer a priority, something that we so often neglect as individuals and in the church, but Jesus himself made prayer a priority. And if Jesus did that, then so must we really uh, hammer that home to us. So it was a great time. Other things, um, both encouraging a sense of unity of God's presence, but also very, very deeply challenging uh, challenging us to look at our lives and how we're living them and what is God saying to us. But let me finish by sharing with you that the, really the most most moving part of the whole conference was when uh, I think it was one of the evenings and there was with us uh, a Ukrainian pastor uh, called Roman and when he was pointed out in the uh, con in the audience the congregation the group. Uh, everybody, without uh, exception, stood and uh, for a long time just clapped and clapped and, 
and, and offered support in that way. We, we're so um, conscious of what's going on in Ukraine and we had prayer times and, and Roman was there and he, and we were told that uh, Ukraine is one of, it's got probably more, there are certainly more Christians in Ukraine than any other European country. Something like 70% of Ukrainians would say they, are, they believe in Jesus. And it was pointed out that this war that's going on in Ukraine is not just a physical war, but there's a spiritual war going on. And we need to pray, seeking God to move in a mighty way to overcome the works of the enemy, that um, pray for God's blessing and protection on the people of Ukraine. Uh, so many sad, sad stories. Uh, let's continue to press into God and to pray for the people of Ukraine. So there's uh, just a few highlights from uh, our week. Hope that that was uh, of interest to you. God bless you. Uh, may you know God's presence and his power day by day.